Hello there, welcome back to another OET speaking lesson. This is all about how to explain a laparoscopy using lay language, which of course you'll need in your everyday lives and for the OET. This is going to be especially useful for doctors, but do keep watching if you're not a doctor, um, if you're one of our other brilliant healthcare professionals, because we're still going to be looking at how you can implement the criteria into your role plays. We're going to be using some useful phrases to help you tick those criteria boxes, because that's what you need to do for the OET, but also that's just going to help you when you actually deal with patients in your everyday lives in an English speaking country. Welcome back for those of you who are joining me again and hello if you're joining me for the first time. My name's Sona, I'm your online OET tutor with Bose Learning and I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET. Thank you for upgrading your OET with us. So let's start by taking a look at just one part of the speaking task. So you know in the speaking task you have the setting, you have the background and you have a series of tasks. You can take a look at one of my other videos if you like to go into that kind of thing in more detail. We're just going to be looking at one of the tasks that could be set out and it happens to be this one. Explain the procedure and in brackets of course they give you an idea of the kinds of things you should say. General anaesthetic administered, the small incision made, the laparoscope inserted, carbon dioxide pumped in to inflate the area, the procedure carried out, carbon dioxide release and sutures applied. Never ever ever just copy straight from the text, always change it, think about what your patient is going to be able to understand, so no medical jargon please, think about what you need to change, how can you make it more patient friendly and how can you just make it easy for your listener to understand you. First things first though, how do you pronounce this word? This is how we pronounce it in the UK, laparoscopy. So the stress is on the O, laparoscopy, laparoscopy. And of course, that's a very technical word. Nothing wrong with using technical words, medical words, as long as you're explaining it in everyday English. So what's an everyday lay term for a laparoscopy? In everyday English, we call it keyhole surgery because it's like inserting a key into a keyhole when you put in the tubes, the instruments, the laparoscope, etc. So we call it keyhole surgery, minimal invasive surgery as well, but the everyday lay term is keyhole surgery. Just a quick reminder then, I'm not a healthcare professional, I'm an English teacher, a premium provider of the OET, so all my health advice comes from reputable sources like the NHS, and I've actually put in the URL where I've got this information from, but what I thought would be useful is to take a look at it and then look at how you can incorporate the language and what other things you need to use in your OET. So laparoscopy is performed under a general anaesthetic, so the patient's going to be unconscious during the procedure, they'll have no memory of it, and quite often they can go home on the same day. So let's take a look at how you explain the procedure then, because that of course was the task. You have to explain what happens. Now you can see here that there's a great big chunk of information. There's far too much for anyone, any listener to understand. So you've got to think about how can you break this down into patient friendly language and you've got to do three things to do this. Do you know what they are? So my question for you is what three things do you have to do when explaining the procedure to make it easy to understand and of course to tick those criteria boxes in your OET? What do you think? Well, the first one, as we said, use lay language. Now the NHS site is really good because actually it's already written for patients so they use lots of lay language. That's why I think it's so good for you to go on there and take a look yourselves. The second thing is to use organising techniques because if you say first of all the listener automatically knows you're going to give them a list 
one of many, the first of several points. So as a listener, it's so much easier to understand what's coming next if you use organising techniques. And of course, that's one of the criteria as well. The next thing is so important and so many of my students forget to do this. So please remember to pause, give the information and pause. Why? Well, it works in two ways. One, the listener is a human being. We need time to take on board what you've said. We need time to absorb that information. And of course, you want to give your patient the space, the opportunity to ask questions. And they can't do that if you simply rattle through the procedure. So use lay language, organising techniques and pause and you'll be ticking those boxes and helping your patient. So how do you begin then? Well, it's a good idea to always encourage the patient to contribute, to involve them, rather than just saying, OK, let's go through it. Or right, I'm going to tell you all about it now. Invite them, use lovely, polite language, encourage their response. Shall we go over what will happen on the day? So the task card may well just say, explain the procedure, but in order to do so, to score well in the OET and to get to build that relationship, that rapport, invite their opinion. Shall we go over what will happen on the day? they're bound to say yes. The procedure you'll be having is sometimes known as keyhole surgery. So introduce the topic. You don't have to do it like this, it's just this is just an example of what you could say, but introduce it. The procedure you'll be having is sometimes known as keyhole surgery. So obviously you take that out, you can replace it with anything else that might be on your role play card. Or a laparoscopy. So as I say, it's fine to use the medical term. In fact, it's quite nice because your patient feels as though you're treating them with respect. They're not stupid. They are able to pick up on medical terms, but at the same time, make sure you're explaining it. So the procedure you'll be having is sometimes known as keyhole surgery or a laparoscopy because we only make small incisions or cuts. So what is an incision? It's a cut. You can see here they are put in the medical word in brackets. So first of all, as I say, warn your patient that you're going to give them a list of things to come. They'll be ready for it then. So first of all, you'll be given a general anaesthetic so you won't feel any pain. The surgeon will then, and then you carry on, the surgeon will then make an incision, a small cut of around 1 to 1.5 centimetres, and this is usually near your belly. So you fill that in. Next, so you've moved on. Next, a tube is inserted through this cut, through this decision, and carbon dioxide gas is pumped through the tube to inflate your tummy or your abdomen. What this does is, so then you're giving the patient again a little bit of a warning that you're going to explain to them what the carbon dioxide does. What? this does is it inflates your abdomen and this allows the surgeon to see your organs clearly. Pause a little bit then. And a laparoscope is inserted through a small tube and this relays images to a television monitor in the theatre so the surgeon has a clear view of the whole area. Again, encourage, invite, okay? So you're asking them, you're pausing, you're giving them the chance to ask questions. And then if they say, yeah, or they not, then you say after this. And then depending on what happens to be on your role play card, after this, small surgical instruments can be inserted through the tube and carry out the procedure. Finally, the carbon dioxide is released, is let out and 
the surgeon will close the incision using stitches or clips and we will apply a dressing. You'll be given time to wake up and the whole thing usually lasts around 30 to 60 minutes or longer depending on what it is. Now at the end of it you want to check that your patients understood you again just to make sure that they've taken in the information, they have the chance to ask questions and it also ticks that box in the criteria assessment list. You could say something like this, well I went over that quite quickly there, was there anything you wanted to check or ask me? So really nice way of inviting the patient to give their feedback, to ask questions and to contribute to the whole consultation. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little look at how to explain a laparoscopy procedure. If you did, I'd be so happy if you could help me grow this channel by sharing it with a friend or a colleague and subscribing to us, giving us a like, sending us a little hello message in the comments so I know where you're from. If you've got questions, feel free to ask. If you'd like to sign up for a free newsletter for a regular dose of all things OET, I'm going to put the link in the info box below. And if you'd like to know more about my on-demand courses which are all pre-recorded and you can study them in your own time then again I've put in a discount code at the bottom in the info box for you. Why not take this time now to watch one of my other videos? I've got over 150 for you so I'm sure you'll find something you like. Take care and see you next time. Bye bye!